Hey guys, what's up? I uh, hope you can hear me with all this wind going on right now, but uh, it's the last week in October here up in Maine and pretty cold out. It was about 35 this morning. I wanted to make a video on how to target and locate holdover fish. And by holdover fish, I mean fish that are stocked um, the previous year. Like right now, it's, it's the fall and uh, a lot of the fish that I'll be catching today will probably would have been stocked this spring or even last fall. I wanted to get out here before the stocking trucks hit just to, uh, it makes it more a little more challenging. And if you can locate holdover fish, it just makes you an overall better angler. You'll have more success uh, throughout the year. So I'm gonna show you a few uh, high percentage areas that you should look for, how to fish them, and uh, just some other tips and tricks. All right, so the first thing you wanna do, if you've never fished the area especially, is you want to go check out Google Earth. Google Earth is probably one of the biggest resources you can have as a fisherman. If you can pick out anything like boulders or any type of structure like that that fish will hold behind. Um, but the w main thing I look for is um, our little runs and uh, just some white water type areas. And you can see where the spots are that have a little bit of white water or rapids or runs as if you want to call them that and make those your number one spots to go to when you first get there just to check them out. If you don't necessarily want to fish in the white water, but fishing the tail end of that white water is usually really productive and fishing the seams and the, the number one spot for catching trout that I found are seams. And uh, if you don't know what a seam is, it's where the fast moving water meets the slower moving water and it creates almost sort of a little line there and that's called the seam and the trout can hang out right on that seam. They don't have to use much energy to kind of hang out there in the slower moving current. And when something comes down through in the faster current, they can just kind of pop up and pick it off. Um, and it doesn't take much energy for them. So those are really good spots. And I'll show you what I mean by a seam right here. So right here we have a little white water section kind of. Right in here. You see there's a lot of rapids going on right there. And then it comes down and kind of tapers off a little bit into the slower moving water. It's still a little bit wavy and stuff right in here. You can kind of see a little bit of a seam here. You can see the fast moving water right here and the slower moving water over in here and this is the seam right on this section. And I would even fish cast up into this little pocket right here. And a lot of fish will hold right in there because that's a seam right there obviously. And they'll kind of hang out in this pocket and shoot up and pick off bugs and uh, whatever else comes down through. So we're going to try that really quick. I'm going to fish here for a couple of minutes and uh, see if we can pull anything out. You can tell a lot by a first cast. I generally stick to the first five casts. If I don't feel anything, sometimes I'll move. And the key to catching a lot of fish, especially holdover fish, it's covering ground, and that's what we're doing. All right, so I found another little spot as I'm walking upstream, and it's not a very big spot, so I'm only gonna make probably, you know, five or six casts into this, and then keep moving. Uh, it's probably, if it's holding any fish, it probably only has one in there. Really fast water out in here, but see this rock right here? Behind this rock, the water splits, and it's pretty slack behind there. And a lot of fish like to hold in that slack water because there's a seam there and a seam there. And they'll hold right in that, that middle. So if you can cast out beyond it, drag it through that slack water, sometimes you can get a fish. Let's try that. All right, we got a nice little brown here. And this is a this is probably a fish that they stocked this spring, really this spring. About 10 inches, nine, 10 inches. Nice little brown. We'll let him go. So I found another spot here, just a couple steps upstream. Almost the same situation. Fast water, slow water. Seams right there. It's not very deep. But I'm gonna make a couple casts just to see if there's anything in there. It's always worth making a few casts. First 
This looks to be another one that was stocked in the spring. It's in that 10 inch range. Nice little brown. So this next spot is, uh, I guess I would consider it a pool. And pools are another really good uh, spot to fish. I would consider this a pool. Some people may not, but. All right. You see this is all slack water in here. There's a bedrock that kind of runs right along the top of that wave all the way out there. And uh, all this is slack and it's really deep here because I fished here before I know. But it kind of gets shallow up here. So this whole spot right here is a, is a pool. It's really deep right on the inside of this seam right here. And uh, that's where you can catch a lot of fish. I'm going to switch to something a little bit more deep diving. I just got a little Rapala crankbait. And I rigged it. I rigged it with a single hook. It's got a real small barrel swivel, took off the back hook and put on a, uh, I think it's like a number eight or six sidewash hook that just clips right on. And uh, it actually works really good, so I'm gonna try that. Those Rapalas are really good um, to use, especially when the water is really cold, like in the winter or uh, really late fall because you can really slow the bait down and uh, you can kind of suspend it because they float. Reel it in and get it down to the depth you want, them, want and then stop reeling and let it float for a minute. That's what, a lot of times you get the hits right when you suspend it and uh, kind of stop it. All right guys, so we're at another spot here and this one is a little bit different. Up here is where we were fishing earlier, up in that, you can see the kind of white waves up in there into this tail end of this pool, and then it kind of flattens out here. And then it picks up again down here into some more white water. So this whole spot right here, it has a slow moving current. And this is a good place to actually fly fish because uh, a lot of bugs will be coming out here and you'll see a lot of fish rise. Um, in fact, there's a little bit of a hatch going on right now that I can see. Um, but anyways, we're spinning rod today. So it seems like from my experience, the trout will come up you know, they'll use a lot of energy to come up through this white water up here and they'll kind of use this as like a resting spot. So they'll come up and rest in here and it's really easy for them because they can just kind of cruise this whole area and uh, pick off whatever they want without using a lot of energy. So we're going to pretty much fan cast this whole flat here and uh, see if we can pull any out. A nice rainbow. I just caught a rainbow. They don't stock rainbows um, in this river. They are they're natural, um, quite a ways upstream. So this is a probably a drop down from way upstream, um, and it's a good sized fish. I'd say it's probably 16, 16, 17 inches. I thought it might have. I thought I had a bass on. That's awesome. Look at that fish. Let's let him go. Here he goes. 
That's a 17 inch rainbow. And that was a natural fish. That's awesome when that happens. I'm gonna keep fishing, see what else we can get. All right guys, I hooked up again. This one's small, I'll be brown. Just a little eight incher. I'm gonna go fish down here. There's a little, uh, there's another run down here as you can see, and right in front of it is a good place to fish. In front of some runs like that, fish will come up through that water and they'll kind of sit right there on the very edge of that, right above the run, the white water there. So we'll move down and try that a little bit. Fish. And that's the result right there. Nice little holdover. He's a little bit bigger, but he's probably from that, that spring stocking this year. He might have been from last spring, you never know. It's hard to tell, really. Oh, there he goes. Got me wet. I haven't really been switching lures very much because uh, they've been they've been hitting what I what I've been throwing. So, but sometimes if I throw a, a spoon or something like like a searching bait, like a little inline spinner or something first, and then uh, I get some short strikes and they're not taking it, especially this spot because it's nice and slow. Uh, a really good thing to use is a small little grub with a little jig head on it, um, and I like to use natural colors for browns and brick trout. But you can see. That's just one of those trout magnet things, and take a bobber. I like to use the floats with the, with the weights on the bottom so you can cast it a little bit further. You know, depending on the depth, put that down there, cast it out, and you it's just like fly fishing, if you've ever fly fished. You cast it out upstream, let it float down, um, let it drift, and then reel it back in and keep doing the same thing. When that bobber goes under, you just set the hook. But I don't think I'm gonna have to do that today. That's a good, uh, that's a good uh, winter time tactic. Right there, that point comes out, that's where we were. And this is that run that was down below. There's a nice little pool right here. There's a seam right there, sort of. I'm gonna fish all right in here. For the sake of time, I'm moving on. I don't have a lot more time left here. So I'm gonna just try to hit a couple more spots. That looks like a really good spot right there. And actually on the other side of the river looks even better. You can see that cliff right there is a really nice pool right there. Really nice. I'll have to get over there someday. I got a fish. The camera was about to fall over and I just got a fish. A little brown. Hey, buddy. <laughs> got a nice little brown. Wind's really picking up. Here's a fish. Had the camera pointed in the wrong direction, of course. I'm hooked up right over here. See him coming up. There 
he is. Oh, he came off. He came off. I messed around too much. There's so much more water to fish here on the river on this set, on this stretch, and I just don't have the time or the battery life to do it today. But I hope that what I've shown you is helpful to some people. Maybe if you're just beginning, or even if you're a little bit experienced. That's usually what I try to do when I uh, fish for holdover trout. And you gotta keep in mind that uh, you know these fish. That is not usually going to be hot and heavy action one right after the other. You're going to have to work for it. Um, you, and you got to think, you know, if you catch one or two fish that are holdovers from, you know, a year ago, that's pretty good. And I got that, uh, the kicker rainbow there, that was, I mean, that just made my day, so. And you never know, things like that can happen.